How's it going, folks? My name's Dez, and I've been using the 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro as my main editing computer for my other YouTube channel for the last few weeks, and I am pretty darn impressed with what this little thing can do and how fast it can do those things, especially compared to a Core i9 MacBook Pro from a couple years ago, as well as a Windows Surface Laptop Studio. So in this video, I'll be giving my overall thoughts on the smaller form factor 14-inch MacBook Pro, but I also have some real-world performance tests for you with a Premiere Pro project that was a little bit rough to edit on my Core i9 MacBook Pro. So this project consisted of some 5K footage out of a GoPro Hero 10 Black, as well as some 10-bit 422 footage out of an A7S III, as well as some screen recordings, which actually seemed to bog this machine down quite a bit. And not only that, I'll actually have some examples of doing those screen recordings with Google Maps, as well as re-encoding those clips using Handbrake. So before we get into the test, I also wanted to give you my overall thoughts on this machine. So for size, it is super portable. It's just a great size if you're looking for portability. And with the power of this thing, you're not really compromising much of it all in terms of horsepower. This thing just flies through tasks, and we'll talk about the performance here in just a little bit. The keyboard is also pretty fantastic, and in my opinion, so much better than the butterfly keyboards of a generation or two ago. It's super responsive, it has a great key feel, and it's really a joy to use, and the same thing can be said for the trackpad. And personally, I'm okay that they took away the touch bar. The display is also incredible. It's super bright, vivid, color accurate, and it's also really great at off angles. And then of course the ports, oh my gosh, the ports. And I'm not necessarily praising Apple for this because they shouldn't have really taken those ports away in the first place, as well as the MagSafe. But either way, those are so awesome to see on this machine. Okay, so for the actual design of the 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, I think it's pretty awesome, just like pretty much all of Apple's products, maybe with the exception to the Magic Mouse. But the portability of the 14-inch, oh my gosh, this thing is pretty awesome, especially considering the horsepower this thing has. So uh, this config, this one is the config with the 10-core CPU, the 16-core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage. And if you are considering a 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, I would really encourage you to try to spring for this model that's $2,500 versus the model that's $2,000, just because you get a more powerful CPU, GPU, as well as even more powerful adapter, plus doubling the storage capacity. Okay, so now onto the actual performance test. So I made sure that all these machines were updated with the latest operating system software, as well as all the other software that I was testing, just to keep things as equal as possible. And we're first gonna start with kind of a baseline with the Core i9 MacBook Pro. So in regards to the actual application startup time, just launching Premiere Pro on the Core i9 MacBook Pro took about 20 seconds for it to be fully ready. And then it took about six seconds to launch the project for everything to be ready to go to start editing. And then with the 5K GoPro footage with the i9 MacBook Pro, it had no issues there. Pretty much instant playback and scrubbing was totally good. So no worries there. The 10-bit 422 footage though was a little bit of a different story where there was a noticeable lag in playback as well as moving to a different part of the clip for it to refresh the program monitor. And then with the screen recordings, a bit worse where the delay to refresh the program monitor was actually a few seconds. And then for rendering, this is about a 16 minute timeline. And I'll first mention that the fans kicked in within about 20 to 30 seconds of starting the render and it stayed that way throughout the pretty much the entire rendering process. And then for the total time for the render, that it was about 18 minutes and 29 seconds. One thing that seems to really tax this machine is taking full screen screen recordings of Google Maps when I'm analyzing GPS track data. And this is generally a pretty frustrating experience for me with this machine. So it's super laggy. It takes it a while to refresh the image on the screen. Moving around the map is kind of slow and generally unresponsive, and it gets worse and worse as recording gets longer. And then with those screen recordings, I usually have to re-encode those because there seems to be something funky that happens with the QuickTime MOV screen recordings when I drop them into Premiere Pro with both playback as well as during the render process where I sometimes see some artifacts. So I usually re-encode those using Handbrake. So just like the rendering with Premiere Pro, re-encoding makes those fans kick in quite a bit, but actually even more so with this where they kick in like a jet engine. And then the re-encoding of that two minute clip took about seven minutes and seven seconds. Oh, and by the way, it does tend to get a bit warm during the encoding process at around 101 degrees on the keyboard and 98 degrees on the base. So now onto the Windows Surface Laptop Studio. So with this machine, the startup time for Premiere Pro was pretty quick, about six seconds or so. And then for launching the project, it was pretty quick here as well. So scrubbing was kind of interesting on the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio. It was very quick to start playback on the 5K GoPro clips, but there were some noticeable drop frames with playback in the program monitor. With the 10-bit 422 footage, this is where I saw quite a bit more decline, where on one occasion, there was actually a few seconds delay for playback. However, the screen recordings, it did quite good. And then for rendering time, it took about 13 minutes and 23 seconds. And this is where I noticed that the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio got a bit warm. It was running about 104 degrees, not lap burning, but warm. And then for screen recordings, I'm using Snagit here to do those. And it did really well here. Very little delay and so much better than the Core i9 MacBook Pro. 
Now, I usually don't re-encode the screen recordings from Snagit on a Windows machine, but just for giggles, let's just re-encode that same exact MOV clip from the MacBook Pro that I took on the i9. And it took this Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio nine minutes and 42 seconds. Okay, so now let's check out what the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro can do. So the startup time for Premiere Pro was incredibly quick, just about three to four seconds. And then for launching the project, again, super fast here where it loaded up all the media and it was ready to go in just a few seconds. So with scrubbing at full playback resolution with the 5K GoPro footage, smooth and instantaneous playback, zero issues there. And moving throughout the timeline and starting playback again was also super quick. Where I did start to notice a little bit of lag though was with the 10-bit 422 footage from the A7S III, where there was an ever so slight delay, totally usable, but just maybe a second or so delay with starting playback. And then with the screen recordings of Google Maps, I'd say it was probably about the same as the 10-bit 422 footage, a very slight delay, but absolutely usable. So for scrubbing and playback, pretty impressed here with the 14 inch MacBook Pro and handled even high bitrate footage quite well. And then for rendering, this was very impressive here. So just to recap, the Core i9 MacBook Pro, it took it 18 minutes and 29 seconds. The Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio, 13 minutes and 23 seconds. And with the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, 10 minutes and 14 seconds. Oh, and by the way, the fans didn't kick in at all during the rendering. And then for the screen recordings, I am super, super happy here where it didn't skip a beat. Browsing around the map was completely fluid. There was little to no choppiness. It did great. And like I said, this was a struggle with the Core i9 MacBook Pro. And then finally for the re-encoding, I guess first off, I'll mention that this was the first time I heard the fans kick in on the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. It was not super loud by any means, but this was the only task where I actually heard the fan. And for that re-encoding, it took it four minutes and 33 seconds. Oh, and it got to be about 89 degrees on top of the laptop and 98 degrees on the bottom. So when you compare the performance of this 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro with a Core i9 MacBook Pro from a few years ago that cost nearly double what this machine cost, the performance is kind of insane. Nearly half the time for the render as well as the encoding and nearly flawless performance when it comes to scrubbing and playback. The Windows Surface Laptop Studio wasn't any slouch in terms of the rendering, but it definitely did struggle more with that high bitrate footage as well as the re-encoding. So final thoughts, this is a beast of a computer in a tiny little package and that was not easy footage to deal with. I have zero complaints when it comes to the performance on this thing and it worked really, really well for me. And this is even one of the lower configurations. Now, if you are curious about how this compares to, let's say the fully specced out M1 Max MacBook Pro, well, that video is coming up really soon. I haven't had enough time to test this completely quite yet, but make sure to subscribe to get a notification when that video comes out. Anyhow, if you liked the video, if you found the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just hit that like button down below. That would be super, super awesome. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.